Podcast. It's Byron from Behind the Scene here, and I'm on the phone with the boys from Through It All, Sean, Lachlan, and Josh. Now, how are we going, lads? Uh, really good, thanks. Yeah, good, man. Yeah, good, bro. And uh, could you give us a little bit of like information behind each of you? I guess we'll start with Sean and then move around the, the, the metaphorical circle. A um, little bit about me. Um, I've been playing music in hardcore metal uh, my whole life, really. I'm like, what, 32 now this year. And um, yeah, I've been doing it most of my life, going in and out of bands. Um, I spent half of that time in the military. Um, and other odd jobs and yeah now we're in COVID and yeah nice to meet you <laughs> that's that's a pretty good uh, introduction yeah um yeah so i'm lachlan i'm the drummer of the band um yeah i've just for like my whole drumming career i've just wanted to be in a in a band I've been in a, like a, a two before this like one kind of series but nothing like on the level of these guys and um yeah, like you know, I can feel like my dreams are kind of coming true to like just play like a sort of established band that can I see a future with. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that that's that's me. On to Josh. Good stuff. Uh, hang on, Byron. It's Josh. Hey man, how are you? <laughs> yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, uh, I play guitar in the band, and. Uh, I've been in a few bands before. I've been, I was in like a metalcore band for a long time. And then I was in another metalcore band that like, they're both gone. <laughs> they're both like gone now, but one was lost their life. The other one was below oceans for a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. So I've had, I've had some pretty fun experiences playing shows and I just love it. So when Sean gave us the opportunity to jump on guitar, I could not say no because I just love it so much. It's good fun. No, that makes... something different. I'm not really, not really experiencing hardcore music as you'd say, more like towards the metalcore sort of side. So this is sort of like pushing my comfort zone a little bit too, which is good. No, that's what you want. Bring bring in a few different tastes to the table. And I mean, like, uh, how how have you found the? I mean, like hardcore and metalcore aren't too dissimilar. But how have you found your different tastes and variations have have come together within the songwriting of the band? Well, um, man, uh, that's a really tough one because. Um, Sean, yeah, Sean and I were talking about this earlier today. Like, we we don't really think. I know when I when I when I pitch an idea to the guys, I'm, I'm not really thinking, oh, how is this going to sound? It's more the way I think of it, how it's going to feel. Like, what will this do to the crowd? Like, is it going to be groovy? Is it going to be a, a bouncy song? Is it going to be something to mosh to? Anything like that. Um, so I don't think the influence is too much. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't confuse you too much, right? Yeah, like it, whatever whatever kind of sound. I know every band will say this about themselves, but like the sounds that we bring forward, I feel are pretty unique. Nothing groundbreaking, but just it's just us. Like there's no hardcore metalcore vibe in mind for us. It's just whatever we think sounds good. Yeah, for me, it's just all the same stuff, just different words to describe it. Uh, means different things for different people. I don't know. I'm a fan of it all, so I like bringing it all together. <laughs> no, it sounds like you all mesh pretty well together. Was there was there any kind of, I guess, butting heads initially, or did you all kind of just sit down and and just write and write and write and then be like, all right, this is our this is our groove that we're kind of carving throughout it all. Um, not as much as you might think. I think um, it was pretty really easy going. Like, it was really easy going. We even had uh, two friends and uh, members that left and, you know, when COVID hit, and it was not a problem at all. It was just like, you know, you know, everyone's got their own thing going on. And we just uh, kept going and we found Lachlan. And, yeah, it's because it's we're such in the new stage of a band, of being a band, it's just we're not in that crazy space of, like, you know, I don't know smashing each other over the head with a hammer. Yeah. yeah. No, it is. It's definitely, I mean, uh, I guess still in the infancy, especially with, you know, COVID, it's kind of made a made a few roadblocks for yourselves. But you kind of broke through, you know, last year, the year that was with Breakthrough, as it were. Yeah. Um, how, how was the reception of such a, I guess, a defining debut single? Like, was it, did it open doors that you hadn't seen before or was it kind of the, the, the kind of reception that you were expecting? Um, on a personal note, because it was like a solo project just before then, 
I had no expectations of anyone giving a shit about it. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was just my average music taste thing that I did. I put my average vocals on it and I thought, yeah, yeah, this will be fun. And uh, All the guys, you know, were jumping in on the music video and whatnot and I thought, yeah, this will be fun. But the the reception was just wild and it's still, you know, it's just crazy. So, yeah, I don't know. People like it. Uh, We like doing it. So, yeah, what what do you think of it, guys? Yeah, I, I think it was fantastic. Like, just coming in, after like the other members had decided to leave, like I remember first hearing it and just being like, "Wow, like this is intense! I love it!" And like it, coming from not practice, like not drumming for nearly a full year before it, it, like kicked my ass. So like getting to play with him, with these guys, and like I thought it was fantastic. Josh, yeah, when Sean first sent me the demo. I was like, hell yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much how I started, yeah. I just started learning it, and then it was just Sean and I had a prac. We played guitar together, and then we just gelled from there, and then just all systems go from then on. Yeah. No, hectic, hectic. And I mean, like, yeah, did you did you guys have a lot of stuff lined up for... I mean, obviously, it was it was like a kind of a one-man show for the most part of 2020 until until the rest of you kind of came around and, and, and Pat and Andrew and, and even Nick had their kind of uh, touches on everything. But was, was, was 2020 meant to be, you know, a bigger year for you guys? Or was it still kind of just writing, 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 see see what would come and, and how it would... Yes. And, like, it was just meant to be like this, oh, we've released something, what do people think? But even before that release, my plan was to book an Indonesian tour mm-hmm. and just write some real rough songs and just feel like a band for like a year. That was like my main goal. I had no interest in like touring Australia or anything. I just wanted to just book some random ass fucking tours, go on holiday. And, and, um, yeah, but then breakthrough happened and it showed me that the Australian public, I guess, from the you know media point of view was like, oh shit, it's actually well recepted, you know? And yeah, so it surprised me and I was like, okay, well, let's, Let's have a look at what we can do and then COVID hit pretty much straight after so it was like okay never mind yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was definitely a, a, a trying time for bands and I mean especially yeah. having yeah. having released your debut a matter of a weeks before you know half the half the country was in lockdown and border closures and everything was to follow um yeah. Yeah. are There's you guys a video online of a guy uh shooting a rocket or he's trying to like make a homemade rocket and it just like does this poor attempt at launching and then flopping and i was like yeah that looks like us <laughs> <laughs> i can see the memes coming from that now hey yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well um i mean obviously it gave you a, a fair bit of time to write and and this year yeah. you've, you've brought out your new single peacekeeper uh yeah. is, is that is that also coming from a bit of a personal level like i mean you touched on before that you were you know, in the in the defense force, um, mm. is that is that kind of to do with that? Um, no, it's definitely. I just because um, being in music and part time army most of my life, uh, singing about music or writing about, I mean, uh, army stuff was never intentional. But because mm-hmm. of what happened in the media, you know, what we all saw and stuff, and people going off their nut online about stuff. It really hit close to home in terms of what I've experienced, and I thought, you know what, what, what not better to write about than myself and what I already know. So I just, uh, uh, yeah, uh, titled the track "Peacekeeper," uh, put some personal words on it, and um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just a little, little sort of introduction into that side of my life. But it's yeah, yeah. No, that's fair enough. How has the reception of that been? I know it's it's only been out for a couple of weeks now. Has your have you seen much uh, in the in the stirrings of Facebook and, and the social medias um, regarding it? All? Yeah, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Everyone's yeah. really getting on board with it. I mean, my mum cried, happy tears. So that's hectic. <laughs> Fuck yeah! I think it's been pretty pretty great so far. The reception. Everyone like I'm waiting for that one hate comment because this is gonna be hilarious. But like, yeah, yeah, like so many people are sharing. Like, there's been people. Yeah, they're already put, like what pushing five hundred views or something. Yeah, it's like in just like a couple of days, it's hit like over four hundred views, getting to five hundred. Um, yeah, and I've I've had people from like my past that I haven't spoken to for ages like share it, and it just it blows me away. Um, yeah, 
No, the support sounds sounds like it's it's definitely there, and it sounds like you're definitely being backed by you know the the right groups and 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 you know good friends and whatnot too. And I mean, so much so that you are you're playing the release show with Heartsick yeah, Spectre. Spectre, yeah, I've heard Spectre before, but I've never never heard of Heartsick. I mean, how did you mm. how did you guys were you friends with those bands prior, or was it kind of just like, hey, we're releasing cool music, you guys got cool music, let's uh let's collab or what was the story uh, behind that? Basically, Brandon from Spectre and the vocalist of um, uh, Bury Me, I think they, his band is. Um, he's he's been a he's been a close acquaintance over the years, and I've been watching him as he's been doing his um, I think it's Borderline. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've just been in touch with him. He's been saying when you're ready for shows, and yeah, and then he just hit me up, said I've got a show, and I said, you know what, let's fucking do it. Yeah. So that's that's it. We're coming out. We're going to play our first show. Uh, we've got some songs together. We're going to play a Kublai cover. we uh, going to play our first demo I ever wrote in this band back in 2017. And, yeah, it's going to be a special night. So um, I hope anyone can make it. And, yeah. Well, that's it. That's, yeah. the, that's the 5th of March down at the uh, Diamond Dogs Music Lounge, Dapto. So that's mm. it's, it's something to look forward to. It's almost uh, just under a month away. Are you... I mean, obviously, you're rehearsing right now. I've got you in the middle of a rehearsal, but... Is it, does it feel good? I mean, obviously it feels good getting back in the studio, but does it feel, you know, like it's it's all been worth it, like having to bide your time for that long? I, I guess. What are you, what are you asking? Yeah, it's built up like, it's built up the more like the excitement to be able to get on stage again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like, I think we're just more keen to get on and play more than anything. And like being able to practice, we've been practicing every Saturday since <laughs> God knows how long. Yeah. So... It'd just be good to be able to just play, even if it's a seated audience. It'd just be good to play for people. Yeah, get on like stage. It's kind of, I look at it like like a fucking caged animal. It's just like yeah. waiting and waiting, and like when you finally release it, it's gonna, it's gonna come out swinging. So I feel like that's that's the kind of mentality we're going in with. It's just gonna be we're gonna give everything into it. Being a debut show, like one of the early shows post COVID, it's just it's gonna be great. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, there hasn't been, you know, too many opportunities even this year so far for shows. So it's really refreshing seeing seeing shows being booked left, right, and center. Like I, I kind of miss, you know, I I'm from New South Wales myself, from you know the Hunter Valley region. So it's good seeing bands like, like and I'd, I'd seen some, I'd seen um Path of Victory before, and I'd seen Below Ocean. I'd seen oh, them yeah, back yeah. in Newcastle back in the day. I mean, there's so many bands, man, that I've, that I've seen. So it's just like, fuck, am I? <laughs> Am I screwing it up or not? But no, nah, you know, it, it's really refreshing seeing people and, 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 you know, musicians and even, like, the merch people. I knew some merch people back in the day are in bands now. It's like, holy shit. It, like, it, it really is almost like a full circle of of just creatives, you know? Like, you're not, you're not really pigeonholed too much. Like, you can be in a, in, in a metalcore band, you can be in a hardcore band, but then you can go to an alternative band. I even know some, some people who are in, like, beatdown bands who now do, like, Cyberboy hip hop type of stuff, and it's just like <laughs> it's really wicked seeing the Australian scene come together. I mean, even even through the adversity and 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 everything that's been going on, yeah, has there no, been? Yeah, yeah. Has there been any anything that you guys have learnt? I guess more in in through it all than you had in previous projects, or has it just been a kind of a accumulation of of little bits and pieces from your from each individual journeys? I've never known there's so many com- like combinations for open, first fret, fourth fret, third fret. <laughs> <laughs> chug, 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 chug. Yeah, I'm picking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know about these guys, but like just <laughs> the bands that I was in before, like, or one like serious band, really. Like those guys are great and I love them so much, but like just the, what, these guys bring to the table it just challenges me in all the best ways and yeah it's just fantastic I just can't really talk high enough about it mm. yeah yeah much much the same as they said so, um, you know coming from doing it from other bands and you know it's just much the same and even what you were saying earlier about seeing people in the community from other bands doing other stuff yeah we've seen that too and yeah, it's just awesome to see people make new bands, uh, seeing guitarists get onto the microphone like myself, and uh, yeah, and fuck, yeah, here we go, 2021. 
That's and, what like, you just quickly as well, touching on that, like, everyone, like, you'll always see the comments about people overseas saying about, like, Australian bands just being, like, there's something in the water there, but, like, not to mention, like, just the Australian scene as well, like, at least everyone knows someone, I reckon. 100%, and yeah, yeah. It's a massive everyone, family. It really is. So good. Everyone seems so supportive and, like, so genuine as well, which is the best thing about it. Yeah. There needs to be, like, a massive Australian scene Christmas party, I reckon. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, who, who the hell organises shows these days, eh? I don't even know. Make it a big festival. <laughs> just book out an entire, entire small country town and just <laughs> run rampant. That's what they used to do. Like, Unified? Is that what the hell? Yeah, I mean, Unify got, um, yeah, I mean, obviously got pushed back and it got pushed back again. And then it was meant to happen in, I think, March or April of this year. And then, uh, like, they, they were going to do an Australian only festival. But then I, I'm not entirely sure what happened. And then they've pushed it back again till, till next year. So. It's totally expected because as I've been to Unify, there's a lot of working parts in that gig. So, dude, there is, you know. there's like, there's what, there's like 300 staff or something crazy for the, you know, for every yeah. every like punter, like every five punters is like a staff working. So it's like, yeah, it's yeah. a massive, massive, massive event. But it's it's wicked. I've only been to a few Unifiers, but they've all been super, super memorable. I mean, other than when I've been shit faced, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Aaron, I uh, bumped into you at the last uh, Unify. I probably, I'd say so. See this guy, and I'm like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> that would have been either when I was about six fat lands deep, or uh, on some other type of substance. But um, yeah, see, that's those sort all of the times Sean Daly remembers. So he probably wasn't even actually talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> the weather of that festival was horrible. Oh, dude, it was. I mean, the the best things for me to come out of that was seeing Diving Construct play the big top and absolutely slay it. But yeah, the oh, weather was yeah. so fucked. <laughs> it was so <laughs> shit. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's not it's not unified. But it's kid weather. Hey? <laughs> At least the people were nice, and that made up for it. That's exactly right. You make you make like new friends every year, and if you don't, then you're doing something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, talking about through it all and and your new track again. Mm-hmm. Who who kind of like the 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 font and like the logo of the band. Was that mm-hmm. something that you guys did in house, or was that like a like how how does it come apart? I always love hearing the origin stories of like band names and and how they decide to go with a particular logo or font and and all that. So can you give me okay. a bit of insight? Yeah, sure. So um, so through it all, the band name um, I uh, decided to go for it um a while back. It was through it all was the first track that my old band made back in 2008, we had like three songs and through it all was one of them. And it was just like really rough, like wannabe hardcore song, but sounded fucking weird. And, um, but nonetheless, it was like, it just stuck out to me for years. I remember bringing it up all the time. How good is that through it all song? And then, um, yeah, it wasn't until I started my uh, solo project. I'm like, I like through it all as a band name. I don't know. It just, just fits. Uh, no, the only other option yeah. was um, I was going to call it Mindset and then make the band a little bit more spoken word, melodic, hardcore. But I thought, ah, uh, I don't want to just genre rise. Uh, I'm not sure what the word is. Like specific genre. Yeah. Uh, yeah, pigeonhole yeah, yourself yeah. too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I thought I'll make it through it all. I'll do a heavy song, which is what I'm used to. And uh, I hit up uh, Chris Zargas. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And he, he was just all over, um, yeah, his work. He, he's working the scene with um, making band logos, music videos. He's and all a that crazy stuff. good digital yeah. drawer. Holy shit. He's oh. got some amazing stuff, hey? Yeah, it's ridiculous. I don't know how he does it. So but I yeah, take it that's where the, the single art came from as well? or uh, The single art. No, so that was a different approach. Um, I was struggling trying to find the right art for this song. Mm-hmm. Um, I went... I went through so many things trying to just find the right art. And even the song, there was actually I actually wrote like two to three singles before I was happy with this one um, because I just had no idea what I wanted and I was being super prima donna about it all. Like I don't know what I want. This isn't good enough. And then um, yeah, I finally settled on the song and I hit up this guy from Indonesia, uh, uh, Gunda. And, um, yeah, I, I saw he's got some cool artwork. He drew up this, um, Rose, 
Um, and it was just what I was sort of going for, that subtle sort of peacekeeper touch, mm -hmm. uh, whatnot. I wanted something I wanted to use on shirts as well. So it all came together eventually after stressing about what to do. And yeah. No, it looks super clean. It, it's like really, you know, obviously it's it's the forefront of the single art, but it, it just looks, yeah, it looks like it'd be sick on shirts. It looks like it'd be sick on posters. Like it's just a really, really cool co composition. Yeah, well, I'm glad, yeah. And, um, and, on, and on that, uh, doing the music video with uh, Corey, that was that was awesome. Fuck yeah, Corey and Nathan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're seeing me. Well, hectic, like, hectic. That dude, like, he's, he better start paying us for all the nice things to say about him. For real, though, like, I just, I would, I would like, <laughs> this is the first, like, music video I've ever done. And so, but I reckon for the rest of them, he's just set the bar so high. Because, like, just for what we paid for, the quality we got was just out of this world. Like, uh, anyone who watches the video will can see that it's just amazing. But, like, behind the scenes as well, like, he knew what he was doing. He, every, like, little request, yeah, he was just like, oh, yeah, you want that change? No worries. Done. And, like, and, man, he was just such a joy to work with. No, that's hectic. That's exactly what you want. And I mean, I've I've worked with, I've worked with him and by him like a, a fair few times. We've shot the same gig a bunch of times. He's he's shot for BTS a few times back in the day. He he's genuinely a really good dude. So that's really uh, good. Yeah, it's really yeah. good to to hear like when bands are you know even more impressed, I guess, than like you know obviously music videos are not the easiest thing to conceptualize or to work with, and sometimes you hear about really painful videographers and just people who were like no 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 we're doing this 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 but it's really it's really refreshing hearing that you guys like worked on it very collaboratively and 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 he, yeah he went even further i guess than you you need to in that type of instance that's really wicked to hear yeah um i mean other than and other than the the gig that you've got next month what are kind of the rest of the plans for you guys as a band are you writing a an ep or are you writing a few more tracks i know you talked about the demo that you that the, the first demo that you wrote you're playing live uh in march but is there is there an ep coming or what what's kind of on the on the horizons yeah we've all kind of agreed i think that's like the next like logical step for us is just smash out this show show people what we've got live um obviously play as many shows as we can in the meantime but like yeah just knuckling down right in the kick ass ep and yeah just showing people even more what we've got really just because we like like we said before we've all got ideas floating around different not demos but just yeah like i said just ideas we're all bringing something new to the table each time we come practice so yeah definitely an ep it's hopefully yeah. Yeah. end of this year yeah it's it's it, yeah, hopefully it pending covid <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no that sounds wicked that sounds that, i mean that sounds exactly what what the people want and you know yeah. as, well as, as well as you guys obviously like you need to want to make music to write music but it sounds like you're all you're all going to give it your all and and uh, yeah. I mean, after this, you know, your debut show, which is which is wicked. I mean, do you? I know it's it's it is relatively too early to tell, but are you planning on playing a few more shows this year if if things all line up, or are you going to take it a bit slow? Um, or yeah, depending on what shows are going um, and what venues are open, it's like it's so hard to keep up. You know, one show's open and then COVID hits again. Um, we're, we're trying to stay open, but um, I'm more than happy to hit up shows, uh, especially uh, the possibility of touring, not touring so much, but like um, hitting up places like outside of our hometown, like Melbourne, Brisbane. The idea of doing that seems a little bit more doable uh, because, I don't know, it might, I don't know, just be easier than sort of trying to do heaps of shows in new south wales i guess i don't know yeah just a few weekenders here and there and, and kind of yeah. spreading the good word yeah no i feel that that's wicked mm. are there any bands uh that that you'd want to share the stage with like local bands or you know obviously bigger bands as well that you're that you'd be like be keen to play with or that you I mean, have that, a kind of goals like, 
that diamond construct tour looks pretty lit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're a fucking yeah. sick band. They're super good dudes, too. Um, yeah. Well, honestly, I don't know, man. Like, that's like, that would be like the dream. But for real, like local bands, I'm always fucking talking about like Father Deer Hands and Take My Soul. Just dudes that like I've met at concerts. Well, like the bad gigs and like had like the briefest of chats and be like, wow, you guys seem like really cool. Like playing a show would be sick. Yeah, basically anyone that wants to have a gig, just hit us up. <laughs> hit us up, up, hey. Yeah, well, you heard it here first. Just hit the boys up. They want to play <laughs> shows. Is there any parting words or anything you want to kind of leave uh, for whoever's listening to this? Well, first of all, I guess thank you. Yeah. Like, and this is a pretty big. This is a really big thing for all of us. Like. Everyone's gone through the, the struggles with COVID, musicians everywhere, but us also being a new band and kind of coming back from it as well. If you've taken the time to listen to Peacekeeper, listen to Breakthrough, look at our merch, anything like that to do with this, we, just, we appreciate the hell out of it. Um, we're only going to go up from here. Because just the, the things that we have and that we're going to create it's just gonna be awesome. We're gonna give it our all, and yeah, just just basically just a big thank you. Yeah, exactly what Welcome said. Yeah, we're. Yep, yeah, agree. <laughs> no, that's wicked. It sounds like you guys have got you know your sights set on on where you want to be, and you're well aware of I guess the the kind of road bumps that have happened, and and that you know there are you know unexpectedly expected future road bumps that are going to pop up but it, it does sound like you've all got your heads screwed on and you and you know what you want to achieve and and you have the the path to achieve it especially three of you like in the one phone call usually i just talk to one band member and they're like oh look i don't i don't quite know how to answer that question like, you know that's usually my guitarist job or or whatnot but it's it's really neat having i guess uh almost the full picture of you guys and yeah. and being able to to really flesh out a few more of those questions yeah, to our bass player barnsey who uh, can't make it he's um he lives about south sydney um and he's got a kid on the way so he's um He's going to be at our show and everything, but yeah, you can't always be for every prep. So shout out to Andrew, Barnsley. There we go. Huge shout yeah, out. Thank you so much for you guys' time as well. I know that I've eaten up a fair bit of your prac time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if there's any any other things that, that you guys want to shout out local bands or, you know, we've done a few shout outs to local artists yeah. and videographers uh, and stuff, but feel if free. If anyone wants a shout out, uh, shout out to uh, Denny. Denny, yep. Uh, Denny from Illify. Illify. She's uh, going to fill in second guitar for our show. She's uh, We've had a practice with her and she's uh, heaps keen for the show. So, uh, yeah, check out Villify, Newcastle uh, Hardcore Band. Huh? Yeah, again, like I said, Father Dear Hands, Take My Soul. They're just great. Yeah, yeah that's about it, man. Yeah, no worries. Well, um, thank yeah. You. Yeah, thank you. It's my pleasure.